Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Classic Gaming Brothers. I'm Seth. And I'm Zach. And I'm Barry. Hi. And this is a special um, Indie Dev Lounge episode. That's which right. Is always good. We don't do these often enough, but we are doing them today. And we're doing it with Barry. And he's joining us from Premium Edition. And Barry, do you want to talk to us a little bit about kind of like who you are with Premium Edition? Absolutely. So as I alluded, my name is Barry Carenza and I am with Premium Edition Games. We are a physical publisher for the Nintendo Switch, where we take indie titles that are digital only and we bring them out physically. We've been out uh, to the world a little over, almost a year and a half at this point. Uh, We launched with our first series of titles, which was Super Blood Hockey and the Pigeon Dev Games Collection. And the reception was extremely awesome. And we got some really amazing early supporters so that we were able to do our second series, which was A Robot Named Fight and Demons Tier Plus. And uh, all four of those games have already shipped out. The series 1 completely, Series 2, the standard premiums are out, and the retros should be shipping uh, around the, this time of recording. Uh, so hopefully you have your copy by the time you're listening to this. And the deluxe of Robot Named Fight will be shipping quarter 1, 2022. Real world has unfortunately slowed that down. But today I'm here to talk about Series 3, which we have announced and uh, we put up for pre-order starting November 16th, and that ends December 16th. And Series 3, for the first time, consists of not two, but three games. You get Cathedral, which is an 8-bit style Castlevania slash Metroid action adventure with some Zelda elements and Shovel Knight elements. Sprawling open world to explore. Just a, a real gem of a game to play. And if you like action platformers with some Metroidvania elements, uh, you do not want to miss this. Then we have Phenotopia Awakening, which is what many consider to be the darling of this series. Uh, Phenotopia Awakening is an even bigger uh, sprawling action-adventure title uh, with a lot of uh, inspiration from Zelda 2, where you have new elements like fishing and cooking and you know new quests and uh, multi-layered quests and just a full world to explore with tons of secrets. And it is just a massive, beautiful 16-bit style with pastel colors adventure where the story is going to take you places you're not expecting it to take you which is great and then our third title is mighty fight federation which unlike the other two is a 3d arena brawler much like power stone for all those kids that remember power stone this is just an anywhere from two to four players uh, just battling it out in 3d arenas with destructible environments where you can actually expand your environment or change your uh, fighting arena completely and uh, you get 11 original characters all with stories and uh, you know, missions and stuff like that but you also get five guest characters that includes Toe Jam and Earl that includes Ukulele that includes Kunio and Ricky from the River City Ransom Kunio Kun series and that includes Miriam from Bloodstained so you're getting all these characters and uh, it's just a really amazing uh, fighting experience it's got rollback netcode for online play and cross play between Steam PS4 Xbox as well as uh, you know, Switch. So you oh, really nice. get the whole field of players can all enjoy this game. And all three of these titles are available right now for pre-order. They are uh, $39.95 gets you the standard premium. All of our standard premiums give you the game on cart, full game on cart, uh, no downloads. It gives you the uh, full color instruction manual. And these are going to be some of the biggest ones ever. Like, I think Cathedral's just over 40 pages. You're wow. getting a challenge card, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a little bit. You're yeah, going to sure. get um, your inlay. You're going to have inlay artwork as well. So it's not going to be white on the back. We don't like that. Uh, also, you're going to get a slip case and sleeve. So all of that's included in the $39.95. We do have retro editions for these games as well, which is $59.95. Um, these come in an NES or SNES style retro box. Uh, each of the games come with the soundtrack and each of the games also come with an additional item. So Cathedral has a pretty much a hand-drawn game guide from Phil Somers, who did the hand-drawn game guides uh, for the early part of Cathedral to get you started. Uh, Phenotopia comes with a chibi keychain and Mighty Fight Federation comes with pack A of a trading card pack that each card is a different character, a different fighter. And we also have an addition uh, you could 
purchase packs B and C, they're all static, so it's not random. And if you get all 18 cards and you flip them over, you can actually create an image on the back, just like the old like Teenage Mutant oh, cool. Ninja Turtles G.I. Joe style yeah, cards. that's awesome. So uh, as of this recording, I can say Cathedral and Phenotopia Awakening, the retro editions have sold out. They were limited to 500 on the site. We did, for Black Friday, put up an additional 50 of each. Those sold out. Uh, and there's a chance that by the time you're listening to this, we might put a few more copies up right at the tail end. So there's a chance you could still get those. Mighty Fight Federation's Sweet. retro is running dangerously low, um, but they are still available at this time. Yeah, I, I noticed also with Mighty Fight Federation, the retro edition comes with the soundtrack in a like Dreamcast style yes. CD case with the, the cover art stylized like the, the Dreamcast, which I think is very, very neat. Not only is it stylized by the Dreamcast, but it's actually stylized after Power Stone 1's Dreamcast. Yes, case. yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah, um, that's awesome. Another cool thing is the slip cover that comes in all versions of Mighty Fight is modeled after Power Stone Collection on the PSP. And oh. the the retro box is modeled after Mighty Final Fight on the NES uh, from oh, Capcom awesome. as well. But obviously with, with our own characters in there and stuff. So we definitely took inspiration. Our artist, I should say, uh, internal artist, took inspiration from those and wanted to convey that. So the fact that you noticed it is awesome because obviously the, we couldn't do a CD-based game because it's on a cartridge. So we said, oh, we can do that Dreamcast right. on the soundtrack and still get it in there. You're, um, the retro uh, edition games, because you had some retro edition games available at Retro World, where we met yes. you. And they, they have like a metal tin case? Um, something? So those are steel books. Uh, the Pigeon Dev Games Collection from Series 1 and Robot Name Fight from Series 2, um, those do actually contain steel books in the retro. They do not. Nice. Have, they're the only two that don't have soundtracks. They have the steel book instead. Oh, okay. I got you. The soundtracks for both of those games are included in the deluxe. Okay, I got you. Um, they're the, I know the only two games right now with deluxes. But this time we, we did a third game instead and we, we opted not to go with the steel book. So we give every retro the soundtrack which oh, cool. super blood hockey and demon's tear uh those retros also have soundtrack so we, we like to try and keep it uniform in in one way but we also like to throw in extra bonus stuff as well awesome and i f- feel like you're kind of changing it up per series too a little bit which yeah kind of gives you some uniqueness in the series itself versus other of series within your guys production lines well that's one thing about when we do a series we do all the games together so right. if you look at Series 1 compared to Series 2, you'll notice some differences in the Series 2 titles that are uniform with them, but are different than the Series 1, uh, where we're trying to up the game, because we're, we're not ever satisfied. We, we put out Series 1, and everyone was like, oh my god, you set the new standard, this is amazing, and we're like, that's great, but we're not satisfied yet. Then we did Series 2, where we upped the ante, and then people called us the working designs of the Switch. And as old collectors, working designs is a heavy name and a very important one, so now we have to live up to those standards, so Series three we're going above and beyond one of the things we're doing is the slip cases are actually uh we're doing in a different facility this time which is using a little bit thicker cardboard so it's going to be even a little stronger a little sturdy and uh if you look on the website you'll see like cathedral's manual it looks black and white Mm -hmm. uh in reality it's not it's everywhere you see is white is going to be foil so it's going to be black and foil and it's going to look amazing (laughs) that's very very cool and that's the instruction manual so everyone gets that you know (laughs) that's nice yeah, that's awesome. And so I don't know if we we mentioned it. Barry's website is uh, premiumeditiongames.com, mm-hmm. and that's where you'll be able to pre-order the Series 3. And yes. we'll we'll get into, and please note that you need to act now is really <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah. the answer. Because you guys are a limited run kind of production facility where you guys will not make more. Like you said that you will make a limited batch more, uh-huh. but you... We never said we wouldn't do more. What we do is we we do an open pre-order, but there is is a minimum print. There is a minimum print. This is the open pre-order. Right. Um, The minimum print for Nintendo Switch in North America is 5,000 units. Gotcha. Okay. We're right okay. up front about it. 5,000 is the minimum print. So all of our games have a, a print of at least 5,000. The reason we do the open pre-order is because if we set it to 5,000 and start production and we get 6,000 people interested, we have to tell 1,000 of those no right now. Right. Or we then have to order an additional 1,000. And when you order after the fact, it costs a little more than when you order the whole thing right. at once. Yeah. So we, we figure, let's just order it all at once, uh, save a little money that way, and this way it gives 
gives more people an opportunity to get it and not go, oh, I have to wait on a reprint. So you could scale, right, as you go through. Once you br- once you do the 5,000, you can order increments of 1,000 after okay. that. So after a title is sold out, like Super Blood Hockey sold out, uh, Robot Name Fight is practically sold out. I think we might have a few retro and deluxe left, but maybe. Like, it's, it's really limited on what we have left. If there's enough interest, we will never say never to gotcha. reprinting. Makes but sense. if we get, if like two people say, I'd like it, we're not going to print a thousand copies for two people. But if there's right. really enough interest or we're going to maybe do something for the special, a special kind of sale in the future, who knows? Um, we have that in our back pocket that we could always do a reprint should there be that interest. So we're not like limited, like that's it, haha. It's more of a supply chain logistics situation versus a you want to make this a like not available to everybody <laughs> well yeah i think i think that's a smart way to do it because to speak frankly if you over ordered something and then let's say you ordered twenty thousand and fifteen thousand people bought it then you're sitting on five thousand units <laughs> so you know ideally what you want to do is you do want to sell out so that when you order more it kind of gets that excitement going and then you'll sell out again well and that's that's exactly why because when we did super blood hockey we only did five thousand and when we did Pigeon Dev, we only did 5,000. Then we took them off the site. We gave them like a limited time. Here's where you could pre-order Boom. And people, well, I missed it. I missed it. Uh, so for Series 2, Robot and Demon Seer onwards, we're like, let's do an open pre-order. Let's give people that option. Let's let's Here's a set window. We want to do it open pre-order. We don't want to pe- people to go, oh, you're just trying to take money from me. It's like, no, look, we're giving you an opportunity. Yeah. You don't get paid for two weeks. Fine. You're not going to miss out. It's not like, oh, I got to quickly hit refresh. But with the retros, because that involves extra stuff. Um, mm-hmm. We do have to limit those. So those also, you know, we put like only 500 on the site, but we have more than 500 because we also have distribution partners. So we then open those, the remaining stock to our distribution partners. And if our distribution partners take what we have, we can't offer any more. But if we have a little extra, like we did for Black Friday, we'll put that on. If let's say we have 500 uh, on the site and we only sell 400, that means we have 100 left of that stock. When we get it in hand, if that 100 is still there, we will put it up as a second chance sale. However, distributors during that time period between close of sale and when we get them in hand can say, I want to order more and can order out of that 100. So we may not have anything left to put out because distributors could could say, oh, I want to carry your product. Give, give me 100 of them and go, OK, we have it available. So we always tell people, if you're interested in the retros, don't wait until we have them in hand because there's no guarantee that a distributor won't take whatever hasn't sold. You know, make sure to get that order in. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Because then they, they could just end up at your like, uh, well, local game store yeah we do deal with some local stores um they they usually will buy just a couple mm-hmm. um but we also have bigger partners like bizarre bizarre overseas you know and they'll, they'll buy quite a bit more now how long have has a uh, premium edition games been operating uh so we went came out uh, in the public in august of 2020 oh okay uh so that was when we launched our first series direct because we announced our games in direct so we have three directs out right now and uh we've been around before that uh you know behind the scenes getting everything ready and, right, and contracts yeah. and all that stuff and uh yeah so we're we're closing in on two years uh, at that point in total just nice. of, of existing in theory as you gain traction you could probably go in with bigger and bigger buys is ultimately yeah series series one you know we didn't sell as well as series two because a, not a lot of people knew who we were because we just came out. And B, unfortunately, there were companies out there like Warren Collectors or Dispatch that did kind of tarnish people's trust in in companies. Like, oh, well, how am I know, not going to know that you're just going to run and take the money? And one of the ways we combated that is all of us in the company, we put ourselves out there. We, right. We're like, no, we're not going to be give a fake name. Like, this is who we are. We're, we're all members of the Switch community already and the Collectors community. You know who we are. And we're putting our names behind. So if this doesn't work, if we don't send you these games, you know exactly who to get mad at. And we don't want that. We don't want anybody mad. We want to please everybody. So once those shipped people oh okay this is legit and one of the things we won't do is we will not talk about a, a, the next series uh and, and announce titles until at least the standard pre uh, premiums of the previous series are shipped so we oh, have okay. launched the series 2 direct in june of this year and or we launched it actually just before june the pre-order started in june i think we launched it late may and all of series one titles outside of the Pigeon Dev Deluxe had shipped at that point. Okay. So people had those titles. When we launched uh, our Series 3 Direct, 
this October, no, it was November, actually. We launched it November, so last month. The Series 2 standard premiums had shipped already, and the retros, you know, were, were close to shipping. So we, we wanted to make sure those customers didn't feel like we were, thanks for the money, oh yeah, here's the next set of titles. We, well, we're going we're gonna to get you your titles first before we move on. That's actually, the, I, I like that a lot. So it's essentially, you make sure that fulfillment is done for the current wave before you even yes. talk about the next at, wave. At the very least, the standard premiums and the reason for that is when, when we get the standard premiums to ship, we actually have all the copies of it, which means we have the copies for the retro as well. But the retros contain other things like the, the soundtracks right, or the, right, the right. box. So sometimes we have to wait on extra items to come into our facility and we don't want to make everybody wait. So so the, the hardest part is the game. If that's already sitting there, we just have to wait for a box to be shipped over or or in the deluxe's case, the, the instruction, the, the deluxe guide. Uh, to be shipped over. So we're, we're not going to say, all right, we're going to hold off a whole nother series for an extra two months or whatever uh, until this stuff gets out there. But if you order that, you know you're going to get it because the game's already shipped out to people. Right. And uh, we have not failed to deliver on any items yet, and we don't plan to ever do that. Um, so, you know, we hope you put your faith and your trust in us. And, and you know, at this point, you know, we're, we're, like I said, just over a year, almost a year and a half in the public eye, and we already have four titles in people's hands that that people are playing. Yeah, and, that's awesome. You know, in in a, in less than two years, we're gonna have seven titles in people's hands. So hopefully, people take that to heart and know that we're delivering on our goods. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Zach and I both own a premium edition game, and we just have the premium standard. And uh, it's a legit product, even from like their. Yeah. I would say like maybe the premium standards your like base model, right? Yes. <laughs> then yes. you, you kind of go up, but even at the base model, it's still like a really well done package. They do a good job at putting together a good product is what i can say and and like i would have 100 percent confidence with buying from barry and from your website but like, yeah. like barry put me down for whatever it's, it's, <laughs> it's not it's 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 not just you I mean it's we're a whole team right you know, absolutely we're a whole team so it's not my website it's our, our team's website right and now and uh, how how big is the team uh the team's very small there's uh seven of us i think okay so it's really small we we wear many hats we all have jobs like specific jobs but we're not limited to those jobs and sometimes we do the jobs of other people okay yeah <laughs> you know it, it, as it happens you know we're you're a small company you got to right. do that we have yep. we have we have very different avenues and we try to cover all bases but at the same time we're still a new company so we're still learning and we're still figuring things out and one of the negatives of being a, a new company is we can't offer the same kind of you know deals that other companies can due to you know just business i mean you, you know if you order from amazon on, you're going to get free next day shipping or free that day shipping and they can afford to do that because they do the volume they do is insane oh yeah you yeah, know yeah. we we can't offer that we don't do the volume amazon does so usps is going to give us a different rate than they're going to give Amazon right, because yeah, we don't yeah. ship the same volume. So, you know, we've had people say, well, another company will give us $5 shipping and you're giving us $6 shipping. And it's like, well, this is the rate USPS gives us. Yeah. Like we can't affect that rate. You know, the only thing that could affect that rate is if we do more volume, which means we need more people to purchase games, you know, and that's just it. It's, as a small company and a start, we're, we're a startup. We're still in startup phase. Um, we're just doing the best we can. Uh, we're just, a, you know, a group of guys. <laughs> and, and and gal. Now, what is what is your within premium edition games? What is your specific? What's your official role? Does <laughs> it work? <laughs> I got a couple. One is uh, we we I'm part of the founding team, and on top of that, I uh, am the head of customer relations. And what I do with that is I, I deal with customers. You know, whenever they uh, have problems, they email support. Uh, I will answer as fast as I can mm -hmm. or at my earliest convenience and take care of customers that way. I have also do other things like uh, when talking about new games. You know, I'll meet with developers uh, and have discussions with them with the rest of the team. We'll you know sit down with, with with them and figure things out you know work on contracts you know regarding to get everything signed uh have done you know just just meeting with them out even after the fact doing like interviews on our, our premium edition youtube for every series i do premium interviews with the developers i'll put out video interviews or on the web page i'll do text interviews uh, so that people can get to know the developers uh so i try to try to handle that too and i've worked with uh, distribution partners entering orders and and setting up you know orders for people to that they can get uh they can get their titles so it's uh it's again it's one of those things where we wear many hats we 
all do different things, and it, and it's one of those where we also play games. I mean, right. when 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 we get yeah. games to to sign, we all have to play. We all have to love. So. Uh, part of that team too, which which is one of the fun parts. <laughs> that's all fun. <laughs> yeah, like you know imagine. that that's that that's that's a really cool part. But it's all a teamwork, and sometimes we can't make it, and everyone else covers, and we we support each other. Uh, I guess on the topic of video games, um, you'd mentioned you know you guys have to you guys have to play the games obviously to get into them yes. to get invested into them. What type of games does Premium Edition look for when you're planning a release? Any game that is fun that that we really feel is uh something that we could get behind when when you look at a game it's uh and we've we played many sometimes you know one person doesn't like it sometimes one person does uh, we always try to come together so because there's a team of us if like three people really love a game and one person doesn't you know that's going to happen sometimes we all have different tastes so then the, we we try and convince the other person like oh yeah oh, and sometimes we'll play a game and we'll be like you know what no this is just not a game that we really love because it's really hard to sell something that you're not passionate about. Right. It just does sales 101. Uh, so if we're going to put our name on something, it has to be something we absolutely love. And we're always looking for new titles and we're always checking them out and playing them and seeing how they are. And, you know, we, we definitely have a motif of like 8-bit, 16-bit, like retro style games. Um, but that's not to say we wouldn't take anything more modern as well, provided that the game is amazing. I mean, uh, Mighty Fight Federation is, is definitely a more modern game and uh, we, we fell in love with it we said this is so much fun this is harking back to you know our college days and our high school days with the Dreamcast and hey let's uh, let's give this one a go and sure enough there it is so we won't turn down any great game and sometimes the games we turn down are great games but we just they just don't fit like sometimes we they may be too short like oh this is over in like three hours of great experience but in three hours uh, you know we, we want something with a little more substance yeah. and sometimes it's just you know it may not be complete or you know sometimes we've, we're too slow we've had times where it's like oh this game is great we love it and it's like oh so it's already signed and it's like ah no we just missed yeah, it yeah, right, so yeah. we we don't really have a pick but what we do have is we have a discord and in our discord we have a channel called suggest a release and we encourage everybody if there's a game you want to see physical put it there we can't guarantee but what we will do is when we see things like that, we'll reach out to the developer. If it's open, we will get codes, if they'll provide codes, and, and we'll play and we'll see if we can get the negotiations going. Sometimes we reach out and they tell us, oh, it's already under contract. And they're, the discussion's dead at that point, but we can't tell people it's under contract right. because that's like private information. So all we could tell people is if you suggest something, we're going to do our best. And if, if it's already under contract, that means it's getting a physical. So your wish is already granted. But it, but that's how we found Phenotopia. No None of us had heard of it. Someone suggested it, said, check this out. We did. We said, how is this not signed? How How is this not signed? Yeah. And uh, we made it happen. That's awesome. Have you had developers come to you? Oh, yeah. So it's a little bit of like a kind of both ways. Yeah, more more so now than before, as you know, more people know us. Um, but we'll have people email, hey, I've got a game and I'm interested in doing it. Would you take a look? Uh, and, you know, we'll will you know say all right sure uh, and sometimes those games are fantastic and sometimes those games are a little rough around the edges or one of the things we will you know we do is the multi-application carts or macs uh, which is what pigeon dev games collection is you know where you get multiple games when you put in the cart in that case you get four which is the maximum, by the way, from a Switch game. I'm a big fan of MACs, 100% fan. Jeff, who does so many things, including production, only wants to do MACs from now on if they are of the same series. And that's because with Pigeon Dev Games Collection, a lot of people look at it and they have no idea what it is. <clears throat> what is the Pigeon Dev Games Collection? Well, there are four games by Pigeon Dev Games. But if you've never heard of Pigeon Dev Games, it's hard to sell. On top of that, it's hard to do production like artwork when you're you're dealing with four different types of games versus okay. yeah. one series you know if you were to say i'm going to do a collection with mario zelda you know pokemon and metroid you would have to do art with all four of them and they none of those four ever connect so it's very disjointed versus if you said oh i'm going to do a zelda collection with four zelda games you can now do link with like the enemies in the corners or everything there's a common ground so from a production perspective standpoint the art is so much easier to do and pigeon dev he did have a harder time doing especially because one of the things we do with all the releases is we don't repeat art so the slipcase art is different from the outward like the retail cover versus the inlay art versus the the manual art versus the label art versus the 
uh, the retro box art, the soundtrack art, the re deluxe box art, the guide art, like all these pieces are different art pieces. So we want to highlight different art pieces. We don't want to repeat. And Pigeon Dev was one of the harder ones for us to do because you have two games with the awesome P with those, those link up, but the other two, Bucket Knight and Explosive Jake, they don't. So in terms of artists, you have different con contrast, even Awesome P being like Game Boy aesthetic versus the other two NES aesthetics. So, you know, going forward, you know, he, he really wants to stick with MACs where they're all the same Kite, series Kite, yeah. and, and, and they can, and I understand that. Otherwise I'd be like, let's take four games from a publisher, another publisher and put it together, you know, sure. Uh, but I get vetoed out on that <laughs> <laughs> because he's like, I'm not, I'm not doing this. And I don't blame him because it, it's harder work. Uh, and it's harder to sell because, you know, some people may not know a, a de developer. Uh, if we said a Nintendo collection, then people would know, but you know, if it's when you're dealing with smaller studios, a lot of people unfortunately don't know. And that's a shame because the truth be told, as great as you say, our past packages are and, and the quality of the product, the real star of every one of our releases is the developer, hands down. Right. And they should be the household name. I mean, that's been it from the beginning. Like even, even when video games first started coming out and they had this relationship of a developer and a publisher, uh, the, I mean, at the end of the day, the game is the reason you're buying the product. Um, but sometimes publishers end up getting to be kind of a more well-known household name versus the, even the developers, which is oh, I mean, yeah. sometimes people get the publisher confused with the develop. Like, did you develop this game? Did you publish this game? Yeah, and right. so we, we have that too. We have people, even at the cons, Retro World, which you mentioned, people come up, oh, did you make these games? Like, no, <laughs> I wish I could make these games. But no, we did not. Uh, I, and you see that all the time. I mean, like if I said NES era and I mentioned three letters, LJN. Yeah. Right. You're going to instantly, instantly have memories of, of terrible games. But LJN was just a publisher. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They did not make those games, which is why they all vary in quality. I mean, they put out games that Rare made. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and, but, but Rare doesn't get the negative attacks from it. LJN does. And they're just the publishers. So you're absolutely right. You know, when it, when it, a lot of times developers aren't seen and they're not given the respect they deserve. And that's one of the reasons we do the premium interviews. That's one of the reasons we do, you know, the challenge cards. That's one of the reasons we do the pre-order window and we don't put out new our next weave of our next series of games until we ship out because we want to focus on the developers and their games of that particular series. And then we focus on the next after. And we, we really get out there and we, we're going to the shows and we're trying to tell people People, like check out these games and these are the reason not us not for a package check out the games because they're the stars and we're always in talks with the developers and we we value our rapport with the developers and we we want to do right from them and like I mentioned uh, Phenotopia already. Phenotopia's artwork, all that beautiful artwork on the, the retro and the standard, uh, none of that came from us. That's mm. all from the developer and his team because he's he wanted his game to be this way. This is what he wanted. He specifically asked if he could have control and we let him. We yeah. want the developers to make their dream game. With Robot Named Fight, with the Deluxe Guide, uh, Matt Bittner, who's an, a very wonderful man and very talented developer, specifically was talking with Jeff, who he worked. they worked together on the, the guide, wanted the cover of the guide to be like the old Nintendo Power Strategy guides. Jeff made that happen for him. And it, it has the whole old school Nintendo Power uh, with their logo as yeah, Nintendo yeah. Power logo and he loves it and it's like if we can make something happen for a developer to get the game that they want to get the, the physical product of their game as they want it we're going to do it because you know they're our biggest critic you know we, we yeah, want to do yeah, right for yeah. them and by them because yeah because for the publisher you know, the developer is also your client <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We And we want them to have a positive experience so that if they want to come back and, and work with us again, we absolutely want to do that. It's kind of an interesting role that the publisher lives in because, right, you have to, so you have to solicit your client, the developer, and then you have to sell their game. But the developer has to make the product that you sell. Mm -hmm. So if they don't make a product that does well successfully, like they could be a great partner to work with. But if their game doesn't sell, that's a, a call at the end of the day that the publisher needs to make. Great, great segue. So you're right. 
Uh, and for most publishers, you're 100% right. Going back to Phenotopia. Phenotopia came out last year. It came out and it sank. It just sank to the bottom of the eShop. No one looked at it. It sold abysmally. They were approached by two other publishers before us. And you can read this all on their official site. The, 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 the developer made a blog about it. Um, the two other developers asked how the digital sales were. And they, they were honest. They said they suck. And those, those publishers said, well, we don't want to do your game and walked away. So when we approached them, they we we asked, we didn't even ask them. They right. just said, just so you're aware, the digital sales suck. And we said, we don't give a crap. <laughs> your game is amazing. Yeah. Like, you let us play the game. We're in love with your game. We don't care what the digital sales are. We want to put out your game. And we had to be a cheerleader. They He didn't want to sign. He was like, no, no, you don't want. I mean, no, we want this game. And we were literally talking him up and cheerleading him up like no this is this is a game we are passionate about and we're selling the developer on his own game yeah right and thankfully he agreed to it and we put it out and the response has been nothing short of fantastic and and he sees that which is which is great I'm, i hope it, it helps him and and now you know it's it's selling well sold out of the retros twice yeah that's uh, awesome. and we're still getting emails can i get can i get and you know the standard premiums have sold extremely well and our, our you know distribution partners are, are, are buying a ton of copies of all of our series three titles and you know it's one of those things where that's what we want so yes you're right a developer has to deliver a good product 100 percent agree on that part but it doesn't have to deliver a product that sells extremely well right in our eyes as long as the product is good yeah i think like part of the role the publisher is marketing right at the end of the day you are oh yeah the burden that you the publisher takes on is marketing the product 100 percent. a good marketing and a good brand story can sell a product and as long as the core of the product is good not to say anything against developers because i love developers and i think of especially course. indie developers but you may be a very good developer of a video game but you may not know how to sell something you know, you know, you're 100 percent right uh, and it is sales. And that's just one of the crazy things is because we have to do that. We have to go out to the shows and we have to get, you know, get on podcasts. Um, we're putting ourselves out there because we feel that strongly about the games. We feel that strongly about the product and we want to let people know. We want to give people the option to, to get this in front of them where they may not have seen it, but there's still one more monkey wrench that you're not talking about. That monkey wrench is that not all games go developer and publisher like this you know like there's sometimes a middleman and that middleman is a digital publisher ah uh, yes because because yeah. there is a digital publisher for a lot of titles and when you want to do a physical release of those titles you the developer could say i i want to go with you but it's up to the digital publisher to make that contract because they now own the rights and obviously they, they take a little bit of the pie as well so now you have to work with them and it's their job to find the best fit for each of the games that they represent so they're selling as well so it's all sales so sometimes in order to do the physical product we have to work with the digital publisher who works who deals with the developer as well as us dealing with the developer as well so it's uh it's kind of crazy sometimes and and every every situation is different for me, it's absolutely fascinating because I'm like a big brand guy. I'm a big marketer type guy. And so I always am like, I always love to hear stories of like, kind of like the the like hurdles that the publisher has to go through as well. Like it's because they people don't really know necessarily like the nuts and bolts of how a video game goes from like nothing to code to being released on you know digitally physically like what the because there not only is there like a digital release is a thing that needs to be taken care of in its own right you layer in a physical component and a physical component is even more complicated because once you start touching actual cogs actual goods you end up making you know there's so much more that goes on right i feel like there was a, a period of time where we're like now trending back towards more physical goods so i feel like maybe 10 15 years ago we were trending towards digital goods right people are like you know steam and all these digital stores are going to kill gamestop they're going to kill eb games they're going to kill all these other physical stores and we're just going to buy everything online there's going to be no physical but then i feel like the retro video game market 
and I think Switch helped a lot with it as well, where they were like, oh, no, we're going to do physical products again. And you have companies like Premium Edition Games who are putting out not only physical cart, like a clamshell with a SD card in it, but <laughs> you're, you're putting out like a solid product that's really a premium product. It's something that collectors can be proud of owning and display for a game that is really just exists in the aether before it comes to you guys. You're right. And that's one of the things is the whole staff, we're collectors. So coming from that collector mindset, we wouldn't put out something we wouldn't want to own in our own collection. And that's why we do the manuals. That's why we do the slip cases. That's why we've done the steel books and the retro boxes. It's stuff that we really like in our own collections. And we've asked other collectors, hey, what do you, what do you like? And we looked at the 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 answers to the polls and stuff and so we, we want to try and meet those criteria but you're you're absolutely right it's it's a lot of work that goes into it more so than i realized before i got into it <laughs> and, and i started realizing oh my god there's so much to this like like you think this is like oh this is gonna be like a party and it, don't get me wrong at times it's party and other times you're waking up at 5 30 in the morning because you've got to talk with a developer who lives across the world and you're you're tired as hell and you're just like i need to be here and I need to put on my best face so that we could try and get this game. And sometimes, you know, you find a great game and everything's great, and then you can't negotiate on the contract. Right. And you say, well, now we can't come to terms. We got to walk away, and we just wasted that time. Uh, you know, and you could have been doing something <laughs> far more valuable, right? You could have been working on a different game. Well, and that's why we go slowly. You know, we're always going to go slowly because as collectors, we know how expensive video games are. We know that. If you want to keep up a full set of any publisher, it's going to cost you. So we're trying to do anywhere between four and six games a year. Um, we figure at that price and at that that rate, that should be on the cheap enough side for collectors to be able to say, I'm going to go for a full set without breaking the bank. And if you're not going for a full set and you just want one or two titles, that really shouldn't be breaking the bank either. And and we one important thing is we want people to play their games. <laughs> like we, right. Like, as collectors, I'm 100% guilty of this. I'll get a game and I'll put it on my shelf and I'll be like, I may never touch it. May never, ever touch it. And it's just because there's so many games. You mentioned, you know, uh, there's so many games out there and there's just not enough time to play them all. And, you know, sometimes a game comes out, it sinks to the bottom of the eShop and no one ever sees it. Yeah, yeah or, true. Or, or the, the Steam store or wherever. Digital marketplace. If you look, like, there's like 10, 15 games coming out a week. Who can play 10 to 15 games a week, let alone a, a 50, 60 hour RPG? RPG or something like that. Forget about it. It's impossible. You're right. And it's it's and it's interesting to see a a company take that into consideration when they're releasing their product. Like you're you're actually thinking about not only are you thinking about your client, the developer, but you're also thinking about your consumer, your customer, the person who's buying the game. And you're metering your releases to give people time, which is I mean, not any not much we don't have a lot of anyway. <laughs> We don't have a lot of time. And I, I, I said it just earlier, I'm guilty of it myself, take, buying games and putting on the shelf and never playing it. And I think some you know publishers might know that. And they just like, they prey on that culture. And we could, we, I mean, we could technically do the same, but we're like, no, we, that's one of the reasons we have the challenge cards is we want to incentivize people to get the games, to open them up, play them. And the reason for that is because we play every game. We're passionate about the games. That's how we could sell the games because we stand by the development developers because they're amazing titles because we feel they're so amazing we want everybody else to give these a shot mm, too yeah. because they are amazing just like oh do you see this movie it's fantastic you have to see this movie uh, but bear thing. you mentioned a few times the challenge cards well personally i think that's one of the coolest things about premium edition games when you pitched it to us at retro world expo that was like one of the reasons why i really wanted to pick up the game that i, I did end up buying in your own words can you describe the challenge cards what exactly are they what happens if you win them and how you guys came up with that idea of course uh so the idea came up from Je jeffrey wittenhagen as the one who came up with the idea because he remembered back at the uh, activision days back in the atari uh you know mailing away for patches and uh, I had forgotten about that because it was, you know, a while ago. And he actually did it. I never did it, but he actually did it. So it, it left a, a positive memory in his mind and said, no one's done that in a while. I think we should do that. And we're all like, that. that's brilliant. Yes, let's do that. So each of our releases come with a challenge card. So on one side is artwork. 
every every card is you know different artwork for every game it's again it's a unique art piece and on the back of it is a developer challenge and the instructions on what to do on on how to complete the challenge and on how to submit the challenge the challenges are from the developers so when we sign a game we tell the developers we say you need to think of a challenge we don't want it to be too easy but we also don't want it to be too hard uh, sometimes we'll pitch ideas to them if they can't think of it and they always bounce off with us like here's what i'm thinking what do you think and we'll work together uh, but they they mainly come up with the challenges and we put that on the card so it's it's kind of another way to connect the developers to the gamers so when you open up the game and you pop in the cartridge and you start playing you make sure to check what the challenge is because this is the right from the developer here they are tasking you to complete this and should you complete the challenge you have to follow the instructions which is pretty much take a photo of your completion but you've got to include the card and the box in there but you could take wacky some people put their themselves in there doing funny faces or you know whatever you want just make sure that we can see that you know you've done the challenge and you purchased the product and then send us an email you have to post it posted to social media use the you know premium tag us premium edition one on twitter and some premium edition games on facebook and stuff and hashtag premium challenge and tell people you know premium edition games.com where you can get the game yourself and uh, then email us that link like oh i post it on twitter here's the here's the twitter post uh as well as like your order number and your address your physical address because we have to mail you a physical product and you won't believe how many people <laughs> forget to include their address and and uh once i i will verify that and if i verify you've completed the challenge i will add all that information to a spreadsheet and about once a month jeff will take the information from that spreadsheet and print out the labels and will mail everybody their patch by hand for free so like i said we're a small operation yeah, this isn't yeah. like you know we have paid in terms of like literally the same guy Guy that's working on the, the manuals that's like writing the manuals and doing right, all the production yeah, is yeah. mailing you a physical patch for free and that's just our way of saying thank you and it's a way for the developers to say thank you and to give you a physical item and each game has its own unique patch so you can collect them all like pokemon uh some people will put the patch inside the game case because it will fit so you can complete your game the only way to have it complete other people will iron it on a t-shirt or a vest or a jacket and wear it with pride because you've earned that achievement yeah i can imagine like the achievement sound plays as you open the envelope yeah. and some people might do that and but but a lot of people then will share that on social media i got my patches and you know we're we're happy when they do because they've earned it you mean you you literally earned this uh and it's it's just so cool to see people tackle it especially when we get emails that say i bought this game and i wasn't gonna play it but i decided to play it for the challenge it's not really my type of game and now i can't put it down i'm addicted to this game I love it. I'm. It's now one of my favorite games, and I never would have played it had there not been this challenge patch. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. We want people to play these games because we're not putting it out to make money. We're putting it out because we're passionate about these games, and we want to we want to preserve these games forever in physical format, and we want everybody else to enjoy them as well. And uh, I think you had mentioned this at Retro World. I'm not sure if this was like an official company thing, but you guys also have sent patches to uh, for content creators, like if they do an unboxing or something like that of of one of your games it's not content creators it's anybody um so what we do is each uh series we have an unboxing patch and it's not something that we've like publicly advertised but it is a very real thing and we do tell people uh, we mention it all the time like on on our playcast we mention it in discord we mention it on social media but it's just like not there on the web page i don't think but any of our games if you do an unboxing video showing yourself not a picture it's got to be a video yeah, showing right, yourself yeah. unboxing and it does if you say i already opened it that's okay you can put it back together <laughs> again. i i will tell you uh definitely prefer the ones where people will talk and explain things and especially when it's your first First time seeing them because i have to watch all the videos too You're right yeah. and you know if you do a video and it's silent and it's just you opening it it's acceptable but it, you know i i enjoy a little bit more engagement but if you do that um make sure to email us the video and in addition it has to be posted to social media tag premium edition where you can get the stuff tag us all that but then send us an email with that link again include your order number and a physical address and we will send you an unboxing patch so each series has its own unboxing patch and you can only get one so if you do super blood hockey and pigeon dev 
you're still getting only one. Um, but it's one per series. Uh, and the patches are our logos. So series one patch is the premium edition logo uh, in the oval. And series two patch is the premium edition Nintendo Power logo that was done specifically for a robot named Fight's strategy guide. We loved that logo so much, we decided to make it our patch. Series three is, hasn't been decided yet, but there will be one for series three. And we're, we're going to keep doing an unboxing patch per series uh, going forward. Now, one thing I do have to state about the patches, and this is important, we weren't sure what the response was going to be. So we ordered a, a, a decent amount of Series 1 patches. We're almost out, but we ordered a decent amount. We ordered less for Series 2 because we're still trying to find ourselves. Series 3 patches have been ordered, and they're, they're delivered. They're in hand. We ordered less Series 3 patches than there were submissions for super blood hockey which which is our our highest submission rate at this point just because it's series one it's been out the longest and you know not everybody has a series two yet and series two challenges are a little tougher we i want to make that clear because you know as long as patches are available we'll send them out but we we want them to be limited as well we want them to be reserved that being said if you get a retro edition or or a deluxe edition of one of our titles and they haven't shipped yet because of real world delays we are putting aside some to hold off and we'll release those out there once those start shipping. However, that doesn't mean somebody else who I only got the standard, now I did the challenge, they can still get from that pile. But we're putting an ample amount aside so that those customers aren't screwed over because we understand we don't want to punish anybody, but we're not going to say we're going to print 5,000 patches so everyone gets a patch. It's not like, you know, Oprah here. You know, they are limited. <laughs> Exactly. They are limited and we want to we were going to find that sweet spot where where it's one of those things. And as we get bigger, we sell more. So uh, we really want it to be, you know, a challenge. It's a challenge. And it's and it's also an event because the developers get to see people complete their challenges and then they get to comment and they get to see people enjoying their games, which that's the whole point of doing it. It's a fun thing for people to enjoy. I want to uh, kind of like recap what you guys have coming out and kind of talk about the games individually. So you have um, sure. three games that are coming out, Cathedral, Mighty Fight Federation, and Phenotopia. You've played each one of the games. We talked about it at the beginning. I think you gave a pretty good recap about each one. If somebody was coming to... So let's say, let's say me, right? So if I was to buy a game from the collection, what would be a good game for me who may be a casual Switch player to get versus which one would you say for a more casual Switch player? player that really also depends on your taste i mean you could be a casual player and all you play is tetris sure you know you could be sure. a casual player and all you do is minecraft or all you do is uh animal crossing so it really depends on your taste i will say this all three games they have something for everybody they have challenge but they also have uh you know the ease to get into and i'll say that all the challenge in all three games are they're fair and i don't mean that the challenges i mean like the the actual challenge in the game right where if you die it's your own fault but you learn the patterns you figure it out you overcome it you win and i will say that none of them are cakewalks you know the, if all you play is tetris you're in for a an interesting ride but as long as you keep open you can enjoy all of them and i would say just watch the trailers and see which one looks appealing to you read reviews the games have been out read right. reviews um see which one appeals to you because everyone's different i mean i could say mighty fight federation because you can get in there and just have fun chaotic you know blast and you can say well i don't like fighting games well <laughs> do you like smash brothers maybe you maybe you don't like fighting games but you like smash brothers then you would probably like this more maybe you you like fighting games, but you hate Smash Brothers. You may not like it. Who knows? You never know. <laughs> yeah. It's really, it's such a broad question, and I don't want to give like a definitive answer because there is none. It really depends on sure. your taste. It's valid. It's valid. We have uh, Mighty Fight Federation, though, is good for those who like brawler type games. It's, Absolutely. It's definitely going to be a, it's going to be a brawler, uh, couch co-op and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, Phenotopia is going to be more of an RPG style, yes, and more of a longer form style game. Yeah, it's hey. uh, it's around a sixty hour adventure. Oh, okay, it's a you know, big open world, uh, engaging story, uh, very good narrative, lots of dialogue, lots of quests, lots of exploration, and uh, very free roaming, but also directs you at the same time. And then Cathedral's more of your action platformer type style of game. Phenotopia is also action okay. platformer. They both are. Uh, Cathedral is more the 8-bit kind of, I want to say, a little bit more on the challenge side when it comes to the bosses. Phenotopia is 
has more of the challenge when it comes to the exploration, but they both they both have their fair bit of challenge, and they're they're both similar and different at the same time, and it's hard to explain without playing them both. Now, have you beaten all of these games? I have beaten Cathedral 100%. I have beaten Mighty Fight Federation's arcade mode, but not with every character, and I have not beaten Phenotopia. I am about halfway through Phenotopia, and I also came to a difficult spot, and I needed to take a break because I hit a challenge, and I know I can complete the challenge, but I had just sunk 15 hours straight into the game and I'm like, I need to take a break. It was just too addicting. I was like, I, I, I need to step up, step away. I got so addicted to the game and uh, I was definitely going to go back, but I was like, I just, I need to step away. I got killed, my own fault, but I will go back and conquer that for sure. But it's it's something that all the games have that addictive quality where it's like you get engrossed in the story or just in the action and the fun and uh, you'll, you'll want to keep at it. It's funny, uh, before we started recording the episode, Barry came on and he asked us off record uh, did you guys get your pre-orders which i mean for a salesman it's the first thing you should be asking <laughs> I, mean, well, you, I did it off camera not to embarrass you exactly. <laughs> hey, which is fine and zach is going to be pre-ordering zach which which game are you going to be purchasing um i was looking actually at cathedral but phenotopia is also like pulling me more toward it at this moment and I, I, i'm hemming and hawing i mean i'm sure i'm sure barry will tell me just get both but <laughs> i will absolutely tell you to get both because they're both classic and they're both great games i mean if you look if you look at like metroidvania top 10 lists you know that people do online you'll see cathedral and you'll see phenotopia up there especially ones that that need a physical uh you'll see them both up there in the top three because they're both excellent games phenotopia though definitely definitely has my eye um with the aesthetic um and oh, so and gorgeous. i do think that mighty fight I, I i do think that has a lot of I, I love like the use of all the different characters and stuff like that like ukulele toe jam and earl and you know just having all that kind of mix of indie and classic characters duke it out i think is great as well they also have the love and attention that you would get like from a smash brothers yeah you know, like when a character comes in smash there's like oh my god look at the attention to detail all of that's done like ukulele story they're all talking like that like that rah, rah, rah. yes and yeah, like the character's yeah. like why are we suddenly talking like this uh you know taken from ukulele you know the the levels are based on the games like funk you know funkatron is there for toe jam and earl and uh the mighty fight federation logo is on it but it's in the toe jam and earl font you get miriam from bloodstain her stage is actually a 2d stage and it's it's literally right that's from awesome. ritual yeah, of the night yeah. uh so that's actually changes it from a 3d brawler to a 2d brawler on that one particular stage uh the special moves are all you know like toe jam and earl get their ship yeah and yeah. they get to use their ship for the special move uh ukulele gets to do the transformations miriam does the portraits which was my favorite abusive move in ritual of the night you know and even, even does the myself and my shadows which is exactly what she that's said awesome. and my wife heard about five billion times as i played through that game and of course once she saw the trailer she was like oh my god myself and my shadows and then she does in the trailer and she was just like yes you know and like yep yep that's the attention to detail um they went with and of course you know uh kunio and, and ricky have a bunch of retro city rant some um throwbacks they've got the 8-bit sprites in there they use like the soccer ball from and the dodgeball and they really pull the baseball bat they pull from all the the games that they're that are part of that series a lot of love uh, the stages are, are based off the games. The music, it's so amazing. And and I'm going to say this, Mighty Fight is one of those games that you're going to pick up and play and you're going to you're gonna come for the guest characters. You're going to pick them to start with, but you're going to stay for the original characters because the original characters are so good and you're going to be like, well, let me check out some of these original characters and, and fall in love with them because they're fun to play. They've got all unique stories. They're really well designed and they're all so, so well crafted and unique. And uh, it's just interesting to see the dynamic uh, and how they all interact. And they have like rivals as you go through the story and the rivals will start talking to each other. And like ukulele and Toe Jam and Earl could be rivals and they could be sitting there talking to each other, having this conversation, you know? And it's like, wow, this is like old school talks to more new school <laughs> in a sense. And it's, it's really meta. There's a lot of that funny, quirky stuff that the developers put in that game. And it's it's absolutely blew me away with the amount of love and attention that they put in there. I'm actually probably, I wasn't going to buy a, a premium edition game. I bought one at Retro World because um, Barry was a nice guy. But uh, I think because Barry's a nice guy and that I actually, I really honestly can say that I really think Premium Edition Games has like a good ethical core to their company. Like they have a good mission statement. And I think because of that, I'm going to try and grab the one of the retro edition of the Mighty Fight Federation. Oh, you sold him on it. To wrap up every, before we, actually, before we wrap up, in your office, you have a virtual boy. <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> just like hanging out now have you used the virtual boy frequently oh i love the virtual boy it's one of my favorite all-time systems nice i had it as a kid and i absolutely loved the library and the homebrew scene and planet vb and everything like yeah i'm a... can you see normally <laughs> never bothered me no really i have a no. friend who's permanently colorblind <laughs> because of his usage so do you like um is it the wario game that's on it that's really really good I, there are a lot of games that are good i think uh, that one just everyone knows but right I'm a big fan of Panic Bomber myself. Okay, okay. Do you have a copy of uh, Jack Bros? It's the only one in the U.S. I'm missing, but I do have the Japanese version and a U.S. Uh, repro. Nice, nice. Done by a professional. Yeah, that's awesome. But I don't have the original. Only one yeah, I'm missing. Yeah, that of game is that game is expensive. <laughs> so <laughs> that is like that is like down payment on a house kind of expensive. <laughs> Last time I saw, it. especially with the market this day these days. I do have two copies of Mario Tennis with the link cable support put back in so that you can play two player. Oh, that's awesome. So you don't like to talk about what's what's in the pipeline, but for those who are listening, is there is there anything you'd like to talk or or tease as it were? That you that you can. I can't tell you what is coming because, like I said, we we don't talk about that until Series Three, the standard premium ship. Now, once that happens, we'll we'll be doing another direct and we'll be having some fun with it and and doing a premiere event as usual and getting everyone excited. Uh, I can tell you that Series Four is in the works, uh, so it's you know it's not like it's something the big secret. Like yeah, we are continuing after this, so Series Four is in the works. I can also say that December sixteenth is the last day of the open pre-order for Series 3. And after that, the, the pre-orders were closed. There is a good possibility that there will be a second chance sale for Series 2 that will go up after that will contain retro editions of a robot named Fight and Demon's Tier Plus and maybe some standard editions and maybe even some Series 1 titles might find their way pop up. We don't want to do anything like that during the pre-order. We want the pre-order to be all about Series 3. But we are looking at ways that people just discovered us now from Series 3 to have a chance to uh, get what they missed. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, is so if I was a listener, how would I be able to know about the announcements? Oh, that is a great question. So there's multiple ways. Uh, one thing we do is we uh, pride ourselves in transparency and communication. So the first way is to go to premiumeditiongames.com and sign up for our newsletter. So we, we do announcements via newsletter. You just put in your email address and uh, you'll get that information right to your inbox. Easy peasy. Number two, join our Discord. All our announcements will be put into Discord. Uh, we have an announcements channel. You're welcome to you know check it there and get you get your info there. Plus, stay for the community. We've got a great community. Number three is follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. All that stuff will also be posted there. Absolutely, you can get your information. Number four is listen to the Switch Mania Playcast and subscribe to that because every week when we do the Playcast, we give you insider information about Premium Edition, a lot of it that you don't get anywhere else. Any information about upcoming events like that will be talked about. Number five is subscribe to our Twitch where we'll do live streams, usually once a week, maybe more, uh, showing off games that we have coming out, playing them, talking about it, maybe have the developer. And we'll also be revealing some behind the scenes stuff and some exclusive stuff and some information uh, ahead. So those are all ways. Oh, and then I guess the sixth option is you could always email us at support at premiumeditiongames.com, which is probably the worst way to get about news because if we haven't announced it, I can't tell you. But, you know, it's just part of the way we want to be communicative with with everybody those are the ways to do it um those are the ways to uh get in touch with us and to to get that information and we really want everybody to be informed we we reach out there you know with big things we'll do press releases um and other sites will cover uh, like for series and stuff and don't necessarily if they'll do second chance sales but those are absolutely the best way to hopefully <laughs> you one of those things tickles your fancy awesome yeah at and least it, one is, uh, so if they're looking for you on like um, Instagram, Twitter, or um, Facebook, they can just look for Premium Edition Games in their search bar and they'll find you? Yeah, uh, Twitter is at Premium Edition 1. The other ones are Premium Edition Games. Thank you, Barry, for coming on to the show. Yeah, yeah, thank uh, you very much. I hope much. it met all of your expectations. To remind everybody, uh, the pre-order for Premium Edition Games Series 3 does close on December 16th. And if you are interested in getting physical copies of your digital game, follow, join their Discord, do everything that Barry literally just talked about <laughs> like five seconds ago. Premium, premium edition games.com. Yeah, do all, follow, do all that. 
And I'm sure there's going to be exciting stuff coming out of their house for for quite some time to come. So um, we're excited to have you on the show. We appreciate the the candor. And for everybody who's listening, you can listen to Classic Gaming Brothers uh, wherever podcasts are found. You can contact us. And then I'll give I'll give your email, Barry. No, <laughs> so you can contact us at <laughs> classicgamingbrothers at gmail.com. You can follow us on our socials, which are Classic Gaming Brothers. And then you can also follow us on our Twitch, Classic Gaming Brothers, and our Twitter, CG Brothers Pod. And Zach, is there anything that I left out? Yeah. Uh, don't play games like my brother. And don't play games like my brother. I've been Seth. And I've been Zach. And I've been Barry. We've been the Classic Gaming Brothers and Barry. And Barry. That's, That's right. Right. Right.